Hello, everybody. My name is Max Steinberg. I'm a partner at Saber Sim and a daily fantasy professional. I'm here with my brother, Daniel Steinberg, who is also a DFS professional, coming off a very big win on DraftKings. Do you want to show us uh, what happened last night? Uh, yeah, so there's a big two-game slate where we had to turn him on DraftKings with a million dollar to first. Uh, crazy amount. I don't know how many entrants there were over a hundred thousand right and uh i ended up getting second by a point i was a point away from winning a million dollars uh i ended up basically having a situation where there's like eight minutes left in the fourth quarter and i looked at my account and i was up six hundred thousand dollars and i was like okay i'm not gonna even watch the games anymore um and then just checked at the end and i'm glad i did because it would have just been heartbreaking yeah um, for sure but you know, I'm not going to complain. I won over a hundred grand. That's pretty great. Right. Well, we are not complainers here at Saber's Game. We're <laughs> all about the process. So let's talk about the process because I have a lot of questions for you and what you did and just show people. I just want to show people basically like how we, your process might differ some by some of the ways that I show my process, what you did and, and um, why you did it basically. So let's just talk about projections for a second because it seems like you adjusted. It seems like you kept a few players with, a projection, but it seems like you adjusted quite a bit. Can you talk about some of the adjustments you made and why you made them, especially in with some key players that ended up winning uh, this this uh, tournament for you or getting second? Yeah, so Josh Allen, um, he was someone I was really high on, and uh, I figured he would be high owned, but I also kind of figured that I I couldn't fade him. I mean, one thing that is great about the Bills is they throw the ball a lot, and Josh Allen runs the ball a lot, and he's pretty good at throwing the ball and they're playing in the game in a dome. Um, and it's not really even a 49ers home game. It was in Arizona. Right. Um, so I really like Buffalo's passing offense in general. Um, also San Francisco defense has a lot of injuries and they've still managed to play well despite that. But I certainly was like a little bearish on their defense uh, and especially uh, like their third and fourth cornerbacks. Right. Well, let's let's talk about that for a second because you love looking at the injury reports, right? And I think yeah. So, a, like, I take know. a lot of pride in just like knowing all the rosters and and looking all the injury reports and kind of the amount of injuries some teams have experienced this year um, is kind of wild. I mean, with San Francisco, you have literally their entire starting defensive line uh, is on injured reserve. And like even their backup defense line, like a Nick Bosa, Solomon Thomas, uh, let's see, uh, D Ford, yes, Ziggy, DJ Jones, yeah. like literally all of them are out. So right. their just defense is really hampered by injuries. But one thing that I thought was re really interesting is specifically at slot corner, they were really thin. Quan Williams and Manuel Mosley are the slot corners, and they were both out. Um, Jamar Taylor is a backup slot corner. He was out. So it's completely unclear who was going to play slot corner. It's probably going to be some really, really bad player. So for that reason, I was definitely a little higher on Cole Beasley. I mean, even with John Brown out, that also helps Beasley. So there's like a lot of good things going for Beasley. But so I like Buffalo passing offense, but I like Beasley specifically because of the individual matchup. So I have a question about that because I'm seeing okay. that Beasley is projected at, I think you put him at 17 if I'm seeing it. I'm not no, sure. It's 15.5. 15.5. So was that you thinking that that was his actual average, like that's what you project him at? Or were you trying to take a stand? On I him? think maybe a little bit of both. Like I really liked him and I knew like it's a two game slate. So, you know, there's, I mean, basically, I, I wasn't really even going to put it in lineup today, but this tournament overlaid a lot. So I figured, you know, there were actually two guys I really liked, uh, Beasley and J.D. McKissick. And I was like, okay, well, let me just make a bunch of lineups that have a lot of Beasley and J.D. McKissick. And I made the projections just how I thought they were going to be. But if I wasn't getting a ton of Beasley and McKissick, maybe I would have uh, manually forced higher ownership or something like that. Yeah, let's let's talk about McKissick then, because he's another person. I mean, I, I don't think he's on the first page, but I know we talked about him and he's someone you liked a lot. You had him way over Saber. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, so Gibson, I kind of got luckier because Antonio Gibson got injured, but right. you know, I'm like a guy who like never barely even looks at the results. Like I really don't care how you've done in recent games. All I care about 
are signs that you're going to get a lot of volume and that uh, for running back, like you're going to get a lot of receptions. And McKissick has a lot of the signals. He's a guy who they put him in the slot. They put him out wide a lot. And they've had a quarterback change in Washington. It used to be Haskins and Kyle Allen, and now they have Alex Smith. And Alex Smith throws to running backs a very, very large amount of the time. So if you look at like McKissick's target share among running backs for the past five weeks, it's like gigantic. It's yeah, 24%. Really. And I believe it's tied for the lead of all running backs. So he was someone who had like had two games where he did nothing basically because uh, Washington was up so much. And I think that kind of obscured the the potential future pan- fantasy points that he was going to have because he's someone who's like a pass catching back and he gets a lot more playing time uh, when Washington's going to be down a lot and they just hadn't been recently. Right. And can um, we so look up your guy. look at your lineup for a second? Because I just want to see what the actual results of this um, were like in and draft on DraftKings. Oh, like, on DraftKings. OK, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, Because I think what ended up happening is McKissick had was 70, 16% owned, which is small on GM slide. And he had 10 receptions, which is quite a bit. He was, he was like one inch from scoring a touchdown too. And then, yeah. And Cole Beasley ended up being the highest scoring receiver on the slate. So another great one as well. Um, Cool. Yeah. That really interesting. I think in general, like, Sabers him is a great baseline for projections, but you can, especially on these two game slates, I think I, I like what you did, just taking a big stand and like saying, I like these players. I'm going to make sure I get a lot of them. And um, I think that's really interesting. So um, let's look at the build for a second. Cause can you click on new build? Cause I saw you did something with the salary constraints that I was interested. Oh in. yeah. So, you know, yeah. it's a two game slate and it's important, uh, especially in a, a top heavy tournament like this, where it's a $2 million prize pool and 1 million for first, it's almost 50% to first. So having like a unique lineup is, is really, really important to maximize your EV. So I definitely lowered the min salary some, and I lowered the max salary about 300 because I just wanted to exclude all the lineups that are very highly likely to be duplicated in a two game slate. It's really hard to get a unique lineup otherwise, especially because I was going to go with Allen, who I knew was going to be high owned anyway. Right. Um, I also have a question for you. Did you plan on maxing out this tournament? No. Before, I, I, yeah. so if, what this, if this didn't overlay, I'd put like 20 in there. You know? Right. Um, so basic, but, yeah. So basically you wanted to take advantage of that, the overlay. Of the yeah. Thing. I mean, you know, we've been a lot around for a long time. There's just sometimes where these sites, you know, they, uh, they're not able to predict how many entrants they're going to get. And there's going to, there can be huge overlay. And when there's huge overlay, they're basically paying you money to put entries in. So when that, you know, it's good to have the bankroll to be able to take advantage of those opportunities uh, when they arise, you know? Right. Yeah. So I think that, I think that's just the interesting thing I wanted to bring up as well is that you get overlay in these tournaments. Those are great times to take a shot and take on more rest than you're thinking. And you did that and it, it paid off because they've let's uh, let's go to your actual build now if you want to. Yeah, okay, sure. This. So I was still able to access this uh, afterwards, right? Which and is- I think if we looked at this, we found it was your forty third lineup. Is that 45th, correct? Forty fifth, I think. Yep. Let's see. Yeah. Here it is. Yeah. So here we go. So it ended up being the forty fifth lineup that you got, and. It obviously had Beasley, it had McKissick, and it had some people you didn't adjust as well. Devin Singletary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if Gabe, Gabriel Davis had looked like you adjust because it seems like you do half points if you did that. But um, it's interesting. Like, you know, you you don't just want players that you like. You want to also pepper in some players that... Yeah. yeah. And, and I, you, I think you have to give Sabre some, some credit here because, you know, Singletary wasn't some guy I liked. But because he's the pass catching running back, he's more correlated with with, uh, Josh Allen than Zach Moss. Yeah. So he was someone who, uh, you know, maybe another lineup builder may have not have put him in this lineup. Right. Um, But because Saberson, because we're simulating the games and we can look at the correlation and say, okay, single Terry catches passes. So he's going to be correlated, more correlated with Josh Allen. This ended up being one of my lineups. Yeah. And so that's another thing to point there. You didn't, you just use the, you did not set any stacking rules here, right? You did not set any groups or anything like that. I, another question for you is I, I see that 
you like you did something with the exposure as you raised Josh Allen's exposure. Yeah. So, you know, initially I, I think I was getting less Josh Allen. Um, <laughs> and I kind of understood it because he was going to be so high owned. It, it kind of does make sense to fade him. But at the same time, you know, I was talking to you before the game. Actually, uh, we had like a side bet on the under of the Pittsburgh Washington game because I was like, "Why is why is Washington only plus six? Like Ben must be injured. He didn't practice all week." Um, I was also I'm not a fan of Alex Smith. I was a fan of Steelers defense. So it's really like, okay, I could play Mullins, who seems okay, but he's just so much worse than Allen. I just felt like, you know, if I'm going ham on on Beasley and I'm going ham on Diggs. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to not go ham on Allen too. So that was something where I just felt like maybe because of diversity, it wasn't giving me as much Allen, but I didn't feel like that actually made a lot of sense. Gotcha. Well, I I actually don't have any other questions. Do you have anything else you want to add or talk about or anything that special you did? Or we can just Um, wrap this up. No, I don't think so. I mean, you know, sometimes it's easy to just feel like a genius after it all gets right one time. And the reality is there's a lot of times where I've been high on a JD McKissick or a Cole Beasley and it's went completely wrong. And, uh, you know, these things don't always go right, but you know, the times they do go right. Save some really helps like give you an actual lineup that is a shot of winning when, uh, things do, when you do get things right. So I I think, you know, obviously I'm, I'm pumped with the result last night and, uh, thankful okay um well uh i congratulations second place he was really one point away it was basically a steelers defense versus bills defense 1v1 that did not work yeah. out i mean yeah there was an interception at the end of the game after a false start on the one yard line i found out later uh, yeah. i actually only thought interceptions were with one point on drafting so that was disappointing yeah uh, <laughs> I, I also can't believe this guy made this lineup because this this lineup I had is was forty five thousand five hundred salary right with the Steelers defense and this guy was like let me one up you there <laughs> and do something that absolutely no one is gonna have uh, right. so, now it, so but good for him and, and yeah you know whatever yeah that, um, that yeah I I think it's great I think uh, one thing that's very cool as well is Saver Sim has a promotion where if you have their logo with your screen name and you win a million, it will give you a custom Rolex. Yes. So, yeah. So, so we, I was one point away from a custom so Rolex yeah, too, too, but too maybe one day that would be great. That, uh, that one you posted on my Twitter looked incredible yeah. to me. Yeah. It's called I'll the Hulk. Really? Um, but so let's just wrap this up. So thanks okay. everyone for watching this video. Congratulations to you, Danny, for getting second in this millionaire maker, very close to a million dollars. Um, we always have a promotion with us. If you've never used our product, you get a free three day trial, sign up on a Friday, use us through Sunday. That's a free week of our builder. Really try it out. It's fun. It's very different than other lineup optimizers out there. I think it's, it's very cool. It takes us time. You don't have to group your players. You don't have to make rules. It's really, really cool. We've also introduced a new filters tool, which allows you to get really the ultimate control of your lineups. Really good stuff. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions for Danny at Daniel Singer S on Twitter, I'm at Max J Steinberg. You can also find us in Save Your Sim Slack channel. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with your lineups.